But this morning, I want to introduce another one of the sponsors uh, for the event this year, uh, and that is your membership. And I'm going to invite Tamer Ali, who is the Senior Vice President of Education for your membership, up to speak for a few moments. And I'll say by way of, of brief introduction that I've known Tamer for many years at this point, and I've watched with both interest and admiration as he built his company, Digital Ignite, up into a leading provider of technology, of learning technologies to trade and professional associations. And then a couple of years ago, uh, successfully sold that company to your membership and became part of the your membership family and has continued uh, to be very focused on serving the trade and professional association sector. And Tamer is somebody who, you know, I look at definitely not as just a, a technology provider uh, or as a vendor um, in, in the market. Uh, Tamer is an extremely thoughtful person um, who I admire greatly. Whenever he stands up to speak about what's going on out there in the world of education and learning, he's somebody that's really, really worth listening to. So I'm going to invite him up right now so that you can <laughs> listen to the wisdom that Tamer Ali has. Thank you, Jeff. I, we overuse Star Wars analogies, but in, in my profession, I think in, our, in the honor of our profession, we should honor the people who laid the groundwork and continue to push forward. And, and Jeff is that person, and, and Salisa as well. So, you know, he, he is the Jedi Knight for me, and so I, I follow him. <laughs> so he's very kind and gracious with his words, but I, don't, I, don't, I, I hope to qualify for 2% of that once I'm done with my career. Uh, this is our 10 minute, uh, it's a very quick 10 minutes. Uh, plug as a as a lead sponsor, uh, it's this is not our home goods line. It's actually the theme of the the, the presentation today. Um, I, I wanted to talk and thinking about what I wanted to say today. I'm never. It's going to be very obvious that I'm not a professional speaker or very well prepared usually, but I hold in this box the secret to all successful learning, and I learned this from Dorothy Leathers. Dorothy Leathers was my science grade teacher, our chemistry teacher in sixth grade back at Providence Middle School in Richmond, Virginia, where I grew up. And she started the first day of class in September, and I think that's when they started school, right after Labor Day. She walked into the class and she had purposefully dimmed the lights. That was a technique she had. And she would bring the lights up, bright white fluorescent lights, cheap lighting, it was an old building. And she turned down the air conditioning to help us keep our attention as it was warm. And she held a box very much like this, and she had us determine what was inside. And we were just guessing and blurting out questions, and she was shooting those down. She wanted us to probe and discover. She wanted to elicit our instincts for discovery and teach us the discovery of science through just a small novel project like this. That imprinted it on my mind, I'd never forgotten that. And what, what she was really trying to do was teach us the concepts of discovery through a very simple project. And as I thought about what I wanted to say today, I was thinking about the most memorable learning experiences in my life, and, and the reason why Mrs. Leathers was so good, she loved, she loved chemistry, despite us being such a disconnected audience of people who really didn't have an interest in chemistry, she got us to love chemistry. And if I look back in my fifth grade teacher, Mrs. Margaret Habel, I even remember her name, I remember she loved literature, and we didn't really like literature at that time, but she made us love literature by the way she read her stories. And, and for me, when I look back and connect to all those memorable learning experiences, love had everything to do with it. And so, if I think back, and if you think back, to your favorite programs, your favorite educational experiences beyond your childhood, to your adult lives, if you look at your sports careers, if you're athletes, those that were most impactful had one common ingredient, love. I'm not a hippie, but it was love, guaranteed. <laughs> I'm going to expose my political beliefs later, but... So but if you think about your experience, love had everything to do with it. And, and I'll, I'll share another story with you. Um, this is not a science project, but... Flash forward to my high school years, Mrs. Martha Jefferson, she was teaching us anatomy in high school, and we had spent the whole semester on the anatomy of the pig to learn the mammalian, anatomy. And so we were pretty well schooled on the anatomy, but she wanted to bring out like the final Jeopardy round, the last day of class. She opened up her book and she read what would be the eyelids of Langerhans, 
what is the most vital co component, component in the pancreas that creates insulin? Our class, which had some pretty all-star students, fell silent except one person, A.J. Jane. He raised his hand with confidence from the back of the room. I remember it like it was yesterday. And he just said, Isles of Langerhans. We were like, is this guy like in this, falling into some Dungeons and Dragons mode? Is, <laughs> that's when that was popular. Or is he remembering some Dr. Seuss trippy uh, situation he had? It turned out the answer was the Isles of Langerhans. It's named after the doctor who discovered the cells that secrete and create insulin in your pancreas. Such a trivial concept, but this ninth grader knew it. And the reason I brought this story up is, as I was thinking about what to say even a month ago, because I'm terrible at these things, I ran into AJ. He's no longer Mr. AJ Jane. He's Dr. AJ Jane. And he's a doctor of pancreatic surgery. <laughs> In fact, I just copied and pasted, no formatting, of the profile on his um, website. You can actually Google him. That's Dr. A.J. Jane. As I ran into him at the high school reunion, it was 20 plus years ago um, that I had last seen him, and I saw him last month, I mentioned the story, and he, he laughed and goes, man, I do love the pancreas. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, Underline the emphasis in love. And, and as we think about yesterday's diagram of the maturity model on stage four and the innovation cycle, in my experience in, in the world of working in professional education, I could see the common denominator in all the successful programs. There's been passion and there's been love and there's been innovative leadership that had that love and passion bridled in a way that would move forward despite any of the issues that they fought. And so, that is my solution for any of the challenges that I see. And as we think about our professions and where we are, I would just use this as a call to action, is that leading learning is loving learning. And as I, you know, I turn off the TV when I see all this, our politicians uh, you know, fighting and embarrassing us, I, I feel like this is a call to army and our charge to elevate our societies, build a better country and our society through the professions. We have a very honorable profession that we can elevate our societies with and impact professions directly. And there are very few institutions in our country that are left that can do that. And so I would argue to you, and I would try to claim that loving learning is leading learning, and I would leave you with that. Uh, I love learning, so I hope you could you know, come by at any point and you know, share your stories as well. And I thank you.